Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and today we'll be looking at the case of Charlize Mutton. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new here, then I hope at some point during this video, you'll consider subscribing and becoming part of us, which is the Grizzlies. <laughs> and if you are already a Grizzly, then welcome back. It's always nice to see you. Thank you so much to Grizzly Hilly P for suggesting that I look at this case. It is so terrible and yet so interesting, right? It's one of those cases it's like, what? And it took place in Australia. So if you haven't heard of the Charlie's Mutton case yet, then don't worry, I'm going to catch you right up to speed. So let's first get started by looking at a video clip. Floral tributes are growing outside the school of a murdered Gold Coast girl where grief-stricken classmates held a vigil last night. Police are yet to speak with Charlie's Mutton's mother, who is believed to be pregnant to the man charged with killing her daughter. Her portrait stands where Charlie's should be, with her classmates. May her soul fly high as she begins her next journey. At Tweed Heads Public School, they remembered the girl with the bright, smiling face and lovely manners. Everyone in our school community is devastated and deeply distressed by this tragedy. Standing together in grief. Age, gender, how they knew her, it didn't matter. The horror of what happened to Charlize Mutton was enough. How scary it would have been for her for going going through that. She was just a beautiful, innocent young life taken far too, lo far too soon. Allegedly by this man, Justin Stein, accused murderer, fiancé to her mother and Seven News understands soon to be father, Callista Mutton remains in hospital for mental health treatment, pregnant with the child of a man who police allege murdered Charlize at his family's Blue Mountain property, then dumped her body in a sandfield barrel by a river. From the cousin she was named after, I wish it ended different, or we at least could have said goodbye. Goodbyes are piling up at a school gate with the words R.I.P. Little Lady. I think it's the senselessness of it. It's the, it's the fact that this didn't need to happen. The school community here is small, tight-knit and right on state lines. They've been through a challenging two years of border closures and are now leaning on each other again through tragedy. It'll really hit them when they've got to go into that classroom and she's not there. Or the teacher's got to look at an empty chair. There are prayers too for the grandmother who'd been raising Charlize. We live with this fear every day that we're there. Offers are flooding in to help cover funeral costs. There's more good than evil in the world. A message echoed by tiny teddy bears, butterfly wings and flippers small enough for a nine-year-old with the words shine on. So now we're going to go over the entire timeline. Okay, so now that you know what happened, not that you know the details yet, we're going to go over that now. So on Tuesday, January 11th, Charlize was on holiday with her mom, Callista Mutton, and her mom's fiancé, who you saw in that video, Justin Stein, in the Blue Mountains. She normally lived with her grandmother in Kulangata, Queensland, but was spending school holidays in North South West Australia, where Stein's family owns Wildenstein, a 12.5 acre property in Mount Wilson. Police allege that Charlize's mom left the nine year old girl in the care of her stepfather on Tuesday night. Now, police are saying they're still investigating exactly why she was left in the care of her stepfather, but it's not like something abnormal to do. One wouldn't think that that's high risk. According to court documents, she was allegedly killed by Stein between 7 p.m. on Tuesday and 10 a.m. on Wednesday. On Thursday, January 13th, police were told that Charlize was last seen on Thursday on the veranda of Stein's family Mount Wilson property. After allegedly having conversations with Charlize's mom about buying 20 kilogram sandbags to fuel a boat and then try and float that boat on the water at one of the docks in inner Sydney, Stein allegedly carried out his plan purchasing 
the sandbags from Bunnings. So if we back that up, just so we all understand, this guy, the stepfather of this little girl, talked to his fiance, the mother of Charlize, and said, you know what I want to do is buy 20 kilogram sandbags and then put it on a boat and see if that'll float out on the water. And then he actually did that and practiced that. Yeah, if, if that doesn't sound like premeditated, then I don't know what does. I'm still trying to figure out what the heck the motive of this was. I mean, it sounds absolutely horrendous. Police allege that after killing her, Stein drove around with Charlize's body in the back of his car for five hours, trying to come up with a plan to dispose of her body. Stein allegedly tried to launch the boat from an inner Sydney dock and failed. He then allegedly placed her body in a barrel and after struggling to dump it in the Collar River, he allegedly hid it in bushland northwest of Sydney. So he shot a nine-year-old girl. We do not know the motive. And even though he was practicing with sandbags to float his boat, he actually ended up being out there at the docks but not actually getting the boat on the water and then driving around, not being sure of how to dispose of her body and then put her body in a plastic barrel, which has been proven to originate from his property and, and chuck the barrel in the Collar River. Oh my word. On Friday, January 14th, Charlize was reported missing from the Blue Mountains property at 8.40 a.m. on Friday. Neighbours reported seeing a car leave the property around 4.30 a.m. The vehicle had its headlights switched off. Yes, you don't look suspicious at all, dude. Over 100 police, state emergency services and rural fire services officers and volunteers searched the bushland surrounding the property. Charlize's mom collapsed and was taken to hospital. Police have yet to speak with her and claim she is difficult to approach. Stein spoke to police in Penrith as, he, as his red Holden, Colorado ute was seized for forensic investigations. Saturday, January 15th. The Mount Wilson property was declared a crime scene and homicide detectives took over the search. With Blue Mountains Police Area Command and the State Homicide Squad establishing Strike Force Buena to investigate. Police seized a boat in the Hawkesbury River to dust for fingerprints and are keeping the boat in custody for further testing. The search of the bushland at Mount Wilson continued. Sunday, January 16th. North South West told reporters certain items have been found and identified, but unfortunately they haven't led to anything that gives us a definitive indication of her location. RFS volunteers discover very small and barefooted footprints on a fire trail. Monday, January 17th, police entered the Blue Mountains property as media was told to leave the scene. Charlisa's mom was to be questioned but it did not occur. Tuesday, January 18th. Police searched near the Collar River and discover the body of a child inside a barrel. Stein was arrested from a unit in Surrey Hills at approximately 8.30 p.m. He was taken to the local police station and charged with murder. And he's currently the only suspect in a murder. Wednesday, January 19th, police revealed that homicide detectives used CCTV, GPS data and phone records to follow Stein's movements, having been tipped off by inconsistencies in his interviews with investigators. The cause and purpose of Charlize's death will be investigated in a post-mortem exam and is expected to take one week. Now, the cause of death has been revealed to be she was shot. She died from a gunshot wound. They haven't said where, where the location of the gunshot wound was, but he shot her. Callista Mutton is under medical supervision and has not yet been interviewed by the police. Stein appeared at Central Local Court on Wednesday and was charged with murder. 
His lawyer spoke of Stein's serious mental health issues that require medication. He asked that Stein be remanded in protective custody amid concerns for his safety. Stein was remanded in custody and will appear in court on March 18th. That's right around the time when Chandler Holderson will be appearing in court in America. Scott Hensby, Charlize's biological father, posted a farewell to his daughter on Facebook. Goodbye, you beautiful little girl. I love you so much. I miss you every day, he wrote. Okay. So now let's look at this mofo on CCTV, shall we? This vision shows what police allege is a stepdad caught carrying out the darkest of deeds. Having shot his nine-year-old stepdaughter, detectives say Justin Stein is driving this Red Holden Colorado ute around Sydney, trying to dispose of her remains. Crucial evidence as they piece together a timeline for the final hours of Charlize's young life. It's hard to talk about, it's hard to uh, think about. Police today revealed a post-mortem has confirmed how the young girl died. She um, suffered a fatal gunshot wound. I'm still heavily shocked. I still haven't really processed that yet. They still don't know why. A clear motive eluding officers. Police have re-interviewed her mother. We're treating her as a witness. The evidence all suggests that uh, Justin uh, uh, Stein is the only person uh, responsible for I must say I'm very, very impressed with Australian police. Hmm? Are you also remember the Cleo Smith case? Oh man, they were on it. And even here, I don't know, they're just very impressive. The murder. First spotted at the BP Marsden Park just before 6pm on Thursday, January 13, the boat and tray of the ute covered over, perhaps to conceal the plastic barrel and its tragic contents. As alluded to... Oh my word. This guy's just driving around with his boat on the back of his freaking ute driving around with a nine-year-old's body that he shot like i still want to know what do you think the motive is and don't get graphic okay keep it grisly get snarky but keep it grisly i just feel like mm, the motive don't you think it's like i don't know it's kind of makes me feel like it's like use and discard or violate and then if she threatens to tell her mom shoot her or if they said he has a very serious mental health issue that's medicated, I wonder what that would be. Is it like hearing voices directing him to do stuff? You know what I mean? Possibly. Hmm. The boat has been um, covered up, but um, when you see the CCTV footage, there's also a tarp on the back of the ute. Just after 7pm, police say this is Justin Stein arriving on Victoria Road at Dremoyne, then minutes later on Bayswater Street in Dremoyne, heading to the boat ramp. Police say Stein spent quite some time here that night, some two and a half hours up until 9.50 p.m., but didn't put his boat in the water. They want to speak to anyone who may have seen him here then. People may have seen something unusual or, or suspicious. Early the following morning, police say Stein made other attempts to offload the barrel, stopping at the Windsor boat ramp for 10 minutes. He then headed to the Colo River jetty before finally dumping the drum on the edge of Lower Colo Road. These timings and locations, especially in the early hours of the morning, would have been unusual. Today, the search continued for both a murder weapon... Small calibre um, firearm. ..and a location where she was shot. Homicide detectives are working on the theory that because she was found in a barrel from his family's Mount Wilson property, that she might well have been killed there too. So is he a mama's boy or what? Because he's on his family's property. And look at this property. Oh my word. Like this freaking beautiful property. What is it about mama's boys on beautiful properties? This reminds me of Chandler Holderson. Like what in the hell? Did you see pictures of Chandler Holderson's freaking house when it was on the real estate market right before they bought it? That's where I believe the pictures were from. It's so beautiful. The deck overlooking the pond, just the size of the house, just everything about it. And what does he do? Uh, shoots his parents in the back. And what does this guy do? You're going to shoot your stepdaughter? A nine-year-old stepdaughter. The daughter of your pregnant fiancé. What? Two. Um, Detective Superintendent Danny Doherty, Commander Homicide Squad, State Crime Command. Um, detectives from Strothfors Buana are uh, making an appeal today in relation to the murder 
of nine-year-old Charlie's mum. Just going to recap that um, this whole investigation commenced on uh, the Friday the 14th of January when uh, Charlie's was reported missing um, and there was an extensive search by police um, and emergency um, personnel um, over a long period of time at Mount Wilson and other locations. Uh, ultimately on Tuesday the 18th of January um, uh, plastic barrels located on the banks of the Colo River and uh, by detectives from Homicide and also local police um, and with the assistance of uh, crime scene and divers um, the human remains were uh, removed from the barrel at the uh, Lincoln Morgue. Um, as a result um, of the investigation uh, prior to getting to the appeal uh, there's been a, a very extensive post-mortem uh, examination. Um, as a result of that uh, the coroner on the balance of probabilities has identified the nine-year-old girl as being Charlize Mutton. Um, however, further DNA uh, examination will confirm that um, uh, positively, but at the moment we're satisfied it is nine-year-old Charlize Mutton. Um, I can also now establish, oh, sorry, the cause of death has also, also been established, and I can now disclose that the cause of death uh, for Charlize uh, was that she um, suffered a fatal gunshot wound, and that's how she died. So uh, we're doing, we're disclosing this for investigative reasons, but also to just to clear up any amb ambiguity, um, to make sure that we have some clarity to the investigation and any other thoughts that this may not be anything but what it is. And this is a uh, this is the murder of a nine-year-old uh, girl. Um, we appeal to the media to, to report on this with sensitivity. The family of Charlie's have only been informed of the cause of justice recently. Um, but it's important that they know, and it's important that the public know that um, that uh, this is a um, you know unimaginable and egregious murder of a child. It is just sickening to think that a nine-year-old, beautiful, wonderful little girl was just murdered, just shot, and for what reason? By her stepfather. Um, the investigations are still ongoing, um, as of. Uh, the crime scene at Mount Wilson has been ongoing. As of yesterday and today, we've still been searching the, the, uh, the building and also the surroundings at Mount Wilson. Uh, obviously now looking for a firearm. Um, the, uh, and that's been with the assistance of uh, police from OSG, PAWS, uh, divers and dog unit. And that search is uh, ongoing. Oh man, that's the thing. Where's the weapon? My word. They found the barrel that was from the property. They could identify that. And they've got the CCT, CCTV footage. But uh, where's the gun? As such as our investigation is ongoing. And as part of that investigation, um, uh, we're releasing CCTV on the, the red Holden, Colorado. There was uh, a scene to be driven uh, into the city area and also around the Wisdoms Ferry area and Colo River area. Um, and that's important for investigative reasons because there are some gaps in, uh, of the timeline uh, where the vehicle was seen towing a boat and so we're obviously very keen to appeal to the public who have, may have seen some suspicious activity um, in these locations. So on the 13th of January, that's the Thursday before she was, um, Charlotte was reported missing, uh, 5.53pm at BP at Marsden Park, Richmond Road. At 7.19 p.m. Victoria Road at Dremoyne. At 7.20 Bayswater Road at Dremoyne. Um, and then, uh, very importantly, between 7.20 p.m. and 9.50 p.m. at the five dock boat ramp um, at Dremoyne. Following morning, the early hours of the 14th of January, about 1.30 a.m. to 1.40 a.m. at the Windsor boat ramp, uh, Livingston Street at Windsor. And then uh, at the Kola River on the 14th of January, at 2.25 a.m. Um, to 2.30 a.m. at the Colo River Jetty under the Putty Road Bridge um, and 2.37 a.m. to 2.46 a.m. at the Lower Colo Road. Um, appealing for anyone who may have seen this uh, red hole in Colorado towing a boat, any suspicious activity or unusual activity around the, the car and the boat at any of those locations or any other locations that may come forward. Um, any dash cam footage that may be, people may possess and we could utilise um, to give us, or any CCTV footage or, hand, or mobile phone footage that someone may have 
course, these timings and locations, especially in the early hours of the morning, would have been unusual. The people may have remembered the suspicious activity, and it's really important to help the investigators uh, in this matter. Remember, um, we're highly motivated because we're working on behalf of Charlize. Um, we're trying to um, provide answers to her family, um, but more importantly, trying to um, deliver justice um, on her behalf. Uh, happy to. Um oh my word, he's just so professional. Am I right? Like, wow. The way he says it, this is what we need, this is how we need it, this is the timeline. Thank you very much. We're doing this for Charlize. Oh, it's just brilliant. Um, answer any questions. <laughs> Okay, so I think it is time for some map time. What do you think? Let's do that. Man, this guy drove all over the place. So first, what was mentioned was the BP at Marson Park, Richmond Road. So it's 851 Richmond Road, BP truck stop. Let's put on the layers so we can see that. Okay, so we've got this here. BP truck stop. Okay. After that, at 7.19 p.m. So I was thinking that's quite a bit of time that passed. But if you look at the distance, you'll see why. Oh, my word. Look at this. This guy drove all over the place. Look at the loop he did. So the next stop is at Victoria Road, uh, Dremoyne, which is here. My goodness. After that, they said at 7.20 p.m. Beigewater Road, Dremoyne. And then at 7.20 p.m. to 9.50 p.m., the Five Dock Boat Ramp. So it's called Five Dock Bay Boat Ramp. Okay, and that is over here, all the way southeast of where you originally started. And he ended up all the way north from where you started. Look, he drove everywhere. Look at that guy. This guy took a long drive. So he went, he really was not, he had no plan once he had murdered Charlize. He was like, what do I do? What do I do? So he put her body in a barrel and drove around with this barrel and the boat on the back of the truck, the ute, for quite some time. So from 5.53 p.m. until 2.46 a.m. he was driving around and then back home. So if we go from the truck stop to Victoria Road and then at Five Dock Bay boat ramp, that was at 7.20 p.m. over here. And then he started heading back um, to the northwest sort of region and then north. He went then to Windsor Boat Ramp in on Livingston Street, which is up here. And then after that to the Colo River Jetty under the Putty Road Bridge. See, Colo River Park Jetty. And then lastly, where he discarded of her body was Lower Colo Road word this is so bad see lower color road goes all along here like this and it carries on here the weapon is yet to be found oh my word wow okay so let's continue with what he's got to say Uh, the search is ongoing in relation to uh, trying to find evidence. We, uh, uh, the inquiries and evidence and information we've received to date um, suggests that the murder happened at Mount Wilson, at the property. Um, uh, it's a point where uh, I can now also disclose that the, the, the plastic uh, barrel uh, was from that location, from the property as well. So it's, uh, it's high probability that the murder happened there. Um, the time frames and, and the evidence we've gathered so far all suggest that's where the, the murder happened. Don't worry, I can't really hear the questions either, but the answers are very interesting. Well, you know, it's, what I can say is that, uh, as, as alluded to, the boat has been um, covered up, but um, when you see the CCTV footage, there's also a tarp on the back of the ute. Um, but I can also say is um, at some stage after leaving uh, the Colo River, um, that item uh, wasn't on that on that uh, on the Ute uh, when it stopped at a uh, another service station at um, uh, Bellsline Road at Kermond. 
So it's highly suspicious that the, that item wasn't there. Oh no, they've got so much CCTV footage that at first he's driving around all these locations with this barrel on the back covered in the top. And then later footage shows that the barrel's no longer there. Like, that is highly suspicious. Oh my word. To be clear, you think that she was shot at the property and then that the child's body was in the, either the boat or the truck in those pictures that you released? Uh, the information, the evidence suggests that. Um, that's, you know, this is a, a unimaginable egregious act. Um, it's terrible to even think about and talk about. Um, that's why we're appealing to sensitivity on how we do report about it. Um, you can imagine this is a nine-year-old girl who's been shot dead and then placed in a barrel and then disposed of on the banks of the Colo River. Um, it's hard to talk about, it's hard to uh, think about, um, but we need to get, the, uh, get it out there for our investigation and to get the truth. And that's why it's important. Did anyone hear that? Uh, yeah, I can now say that um, um, Charlize's mother, Calista, has been um, uh, re-interviewed. She's provided a formal statement um, last Friday. Um, she's in alternative accommodation after leaving um, medical care. Um, the formal statement at this stage corroborates the original version she's provided. Um, and I can, the evidence and the information we have is that we're treating her as a witness um, and there's no information or evidence at this stage that puts her at the property at the time of the murder. We're, we're alleging in court and you remember there's a 31 year old going to court for murder. We're, um, we're alleging that uh, the murder happened uh, Tuesday night or early hours of Wednesday morning and the information the evidence we have is that um, uh, Charlotte's mother's not at the property at that time. Did anyone hear the gunshot? That that's all part of the, um, the appeal. Any information that we get uh, from now on, knowing that now that we know there was a shooting, uh, is really important. So um, at this stage, those investigations are ongoing. We've got a, a large amount of police that, again, highly motivated to get these answers. Um, you don't get much more motivation than a, a nine-year-old girl that's been murdered. Well said. Um, so that was on Tuesday, January the 11th. It was on Tuesday, January the 11th in the evening or on Wednesday on January the 12th, in the early hours of the morning, when Charlize was murdered? Um, at the moment, uh, we're not going to disclose too much, but we, uh, what we believe from the post-mortem is a, um, uh, a small calibre um, firearm. I'm speaking with Charlize, um, do you have any clarity as to why she wasn't at the property? She's provided um, a formal statement and, and an original version. Um, she was there, and again, we won't go into it too much, but she was um, staying at the caravan at the time, and uh, the 31-year-old Justin Stein was with Charlize at the time at the property at Mount Wilson. Why would someone do, do this? This is all part of the gathering of information and evidence for the court. Um, we will be providing all that information to the court when we have to, but we, I mean, really, in terms of not long after the... Um, um, Charlotte's uh, remains were found. Um, uh, Justin Stone was charged, arrested and charged in a, in a fairly short amount of time. Um, so uh, he, he's uh, got rights at the moment in relation to his versions. Um, and I can't, don't want to expand on that at the moment for court. Um, but, and again, that's all part of our ongoing investigation. Why would someone do this? Uh, how the circumstances of why she was there alone with Justin at the time? They're, they're all part of the ongoing investigation. Is he a registered gun owner? Is he a registered gun owner? Um, not as far as I know. Can you confirm that when she was reported missing, that she was her mother, did you confirm that she last saw Charlie on Thursday? Um, there were some reports that she, she said that. I think um, her original version changed a little bit. Um, there was a number of versions. That's why it made it very difficult for the police from Blue Mountains to start off with, assisted by State Crime Command. Um, um, it also made it difficult for the, probably the search coordinators and the hundreds of volunteers that assisted the police because, you know, there was different versions of time frames. But from our information, the evidence we've uh, so far gleaned is that the, um, Justin was alone with Charlize on the Tuesday night um, and the murder, we were alleging court that the murder happened Tuesday night or early hours of Wednesday morning. 
Uh, the information and evidence we've got so far hasn't suggested anyone else. Um, actually, the, only, the evidence all suggests that uh, Justin uh, uh, Stein is the only person uh, responsible for the murder, um, placing Charlie's in the barrel and disposing the barrel on the banks of the Colo River. Um, that, that's the information we've got so far. The investigation is ongoing. I'm always wondering how these people think they're going to get away with this, no matter where they are in the world. Like, you're going to place a child that you've shot in a barrel from your property and drive around for hours where there's, yes, a lot of CCTV footage. And then just throw the barrel in the Collar River and think, like, I'll be fine. How? How? Whew. Uh, look, he, he provided a couple of varying versions to start off with, and then since then he's been arrested and charged. So that's it. He's before the courts. I'm not going to go... Again, we're talking about sensitivity of how we're going to report this. Um, you've got a nine-year-old girl who's suffered a fatal gunshot wound. That's all you need uh, at this stage we're allowed to disclose. Family members have just been told. It's very sensitive for them. Um, and it's also important for our integrity of our investigation to maintain that. Um, and also the fact that we don't want to be subjudiced before the court. Oh, look, you know, um, her extended family and friends, especially, I and mean, she's got young friends as well. I mean, they're devastated. I mean, this is um, uh, terrible news that we had to deliver to them uh, uh, just recently. Um, and, you know, this would be a hard thing for them to get by, but they'll get support and we'll provide that much support if we can. But, um, they're getting support from their own friends and, and family, but it's devastating from not only the fact that there was a nine-year-old, but the, the, it's the circumstances of how um, how she lost her life. Um, it's uh, it's unimaginable. Last question. Is there anything about his movements on the Tuesday? I know you say the investigation is ongoing, but mm. you can tell us about his movements on the Tuesday that would shed some light as to a possible way what led up to this. The, the, reason the movements on the Tuesday is that he's at the property at Mount Wilson with Charlize. And that's his movements. That's where he's. That's where he's there. Um, what we're appealing for is the movements on the um, on the Thursday night, early hours of Friday morning. That's really relevant for us. And when you look at the CCTV footage and the images and the time frames, um, that's why it's really important for us to get the information from the public because it, that's crucial to us to establish the timelines and any activity, or unusual activity, or any information surrounding those locations where he visited or where that vehicle and the boat were visited. Um, so it's really important that we keep an open mind uh, on the Thursday night, but really it's, it's so important for the, for the community to help us. Um, look, again, it's sensitive. This is probably very unpalatable for the community to hear all uh, the circumstances of what this um, you know, beautiful nine-year-old girl. But it's important for us um, to do that um, so we can get answers for the family. And really, what's the most important to us is Charlie's is not here to defend herself. We've got to be, act on her behalf and we want to make sure that justice is delivered for her. I'm telling you, this guy is so soothing. That's the police type. This is the type of police officer we want on a case, right? They're, they're home alone on the Tuesday night, early hours. That's all we can tell you at the moment. Was it common for Australia? Um, again, that's all part of the investigations, uh, the, the amount of times that may have happened in the circumstances. But I, I'm only acting on the facts that we've got at the moment, the information we've got at the moment. Last question. You've said before that uh, what alerted um, police to the capacity was that you see both calls between Justin and Elizabeth. So do they have contact between Tuesday and Friday when you... Look, that, look that's all part of the um, investigation. Um, there's a number of inc investigation and, and inquiries that we had to make. Uh, to, to be able to establish uh, the movements and tracking off of Justin Stein, but more importantly, the tracking and movements of this Holden, Colorado, and, and the boat. So it's important for us. There's gaps there, and that's why it's important for us to get the, the information from the public. We really need the, the, the community's assistance with this. Yeah, that's us. <laughs> the public. They need the public to come forward with information. So if you live in Australia, in this area, North Southwest Australia, Dremoyne, near the Colo, uh, the Colo River, anything like that, and you saw anything, mm, gotta say something, gotta say something. What a horrible, horrible crime and stepfather. 
Let's have a look at this video clip next. A man has been charged over the murder of a nine-year-old girl who went missing from a property in the New South Wales Blue Mountains. Police arrested a 32-year-old man at a unit in Surrey Hills at 8.30 last night. He was refused bail and will appear in Sydney Central Local Court today. Investigators have not disclosed if they know the whereabouts of the girl's body, though. OK, so if we look at this together, Charlie's Mutton's stepfather drove approximately 200 kilometres towing a boat loaded with a plastic barrel carrying the remains of the nine-year-old over a cir circuitous five-hour trek, police allege. The barrel allegedly lay under a blue tarp in the boat towed by Justin Stein's Red Holden Ute from the Blue Mountains to Bunnings at Marsden Park, a nearby BP petrol station, and then on to two Sydney boat ramps. Attempts to dispose of the schoolgirl's remains in the water are said by police to have been thwarted by Stein's inability to launch the motorboat taken from his family's luxury Blue Mountains property. In the end, after failing to start the boat and take the barrel, now also weighted down with sand, to sink into deeper water, Stein allegedly took off for the Collar River. On the afternoon of Thursday, January 13th, on a riverbank around 80 kilometers northwest of Sydney, police say the 31-year-old pulled up his ute in bushland. Stein then allegedly tried to drag the heavy barrel to the river's edge and roll it in, but the weight of the sand prevented him doing so, and finally he was forced to abandon it in the scrub. Oh my word. So here they say the Wildenstein, private gardens, and there's a whole little map going on here. Nine-year-old Charlie's lived with her grandmother, Deborah Mutton, on the Gold Coast. It's unclear how much time she spent with her biological parents, but was with her mother and her mother's fiancé's um, family estate at Mount Wilson when she went missing. She will be remembered as a much-loved friend and student who has touched many lives. Oh, my word. Police allege Charlie's mutton nine, who arrived to holiday at the Wildwood Mountain Estate, was murdered and her body encased in a barrel, which was towed for hours in a boat before being dumped on a lonely riverbank in dense bushland. This is the mofo we're talking about today. Police allege Justin Stein, 31, towed a boat behind his ute, which had Charlie's mutton's body inside a barrel on board as he tried to dispose, dispose of the remains. There's the car. Stein's red Holden ute above after it was seized by police allegedly towed a boat with a barrel of Charlize's remains from Mount Wilson to Marsden Park and two Sydney boat ramps. Charlize's remains lay in the barrel on the riverbank for five days as emergency workers searched fruitlessly for the missing girl around Mount Wilson, 65 kilometers further west. That was until the afternoon of Tuesday, January 18th, when police, acting on GPS data, located the barrel in the bush and made the gruesome discovery of Shalisa's decomposing remains. This is how the tragedy unfolded from the moment police alleged Justin Stein murdered his new fiancé's daughter, who had come to holiday with them at the Stein's family grand country estate, Wildenstein. Nine-year-old Charlize Mutton's remains were placed inside a barrel and put in a boat which was towed 200 kilometers on a circuitous track before she was dumped in scrub on the Collar River. Charlize Mutton, nine years old, who lives full-time with her grandparents, Deborah and Clint Mutton, in the Queensland border town of Kulangata, arrived at Wildenstein during the Christmas New Year school holidays. Owned by the wealthy antique dealer Stein family for two decades, Wildenstein was operated as a wedding venue by Justin's older brother James and his husband Keegan Buzzer. Justin Stein had stayed in a shack on the five hectare property in past years and Charlize came to spend a vacation there with her bi biological mother. Police seized a boat from the Wildenstein property above, where Charlize was staying with her mother and Justin Stein on holiday before she was allegedly murdered. 
Justin Stein allegedly called Callista Mutton above, so this is uh, Charlize's mother, as he bought bags of sand, boat fuel, and then unsuccessfully tried to launch the vessel with the barrel from two different boat ramps. Any red flags, anyone? Police above at the Collar River where Justin Stein allegedly dumped Charlisa's body in a barrel five days before the nine-year-old's decomposed remains were found. Callista Mutton had relinquished guardianship of Charlisa after developing a methamphetamine addiction, failed attempts to undergo rehabilitation, and a two-year prison stretch for killing a female friend she drove into a river while high on ice. Police allege that between 7 p.m. on Tuesday, January 11th, and 10 a.m. on Wednesday, January 12th, when Callista Mutton is said to have been absent from Wildenstein, Justin Stein murdered Charlize. But it would take two days for police and the community to be aware that anything was amiss with a little girl whose remains were placed into a plastic barrel. Before it became the scene of schoolgirl Charlie's Mutton's disappearance, the Wildenstein property in North South West's Blue Mountains, this is in Australia, was best known as one of Australia's leading wedding locations. Over the last five years, the 12.5 acre multi million dollar estate has been the destination of the nuptials of everyone from AFL great Buddy Franklin and model and former Miss Universe Jacinta Campbell to Channel 9 presenter Julie Snook and actor Hugo Johnston Burt. The lavish venue features cool climate gardens, the design of which interior designer and event planner James Stein Jr., who runs the property, attributes to his father and art, including La Paloma Urns, bronze and marble sculptures, is scattered throughout the grounds. Oh my word. This is Charlie's Mutton, who was murdered by her stepfather. She was only nine years old. The Wildenstein property in North Southwest Blue Mountains. The lavish 12.5 acre multi million dollar estate is best known as one of Australia's leading wedding locations. I see they've now removed their uh, Instagram pictures. One of the lavish gardens on the estate. Wildenstein wedding venue at Mount Wilson in the Blue Mountains. The decision to turn the Steins family weekend getaway of more than two decades into a wedding and event location was the product of Stein Jr.'s own nuptials in 2015. People saw our photos and started asking about whether we offered weddings at the property, he previously told the design file. So I believe this is the brother of Justin. Justin is the one who murdered Charlize. Twelve months later, Campbell, in custom Vera Wang and Franklin tied the knot in an intimate garden ceremony on November 4th and put the exclusive location on the map. Last year, Snook and Johnston Burt married at the venue with Snook dazzling in a custom Villani gown. Over the past week, though, the destination became the base of an extensive police, SES and RFS search with emergency services scouring bushland around the Mount Wilson estate where a nine-year-old girl was staying with her mom, Charlize Mutton, and her mom's fiancé. The girl usually lives with her grandmother in Kulangara, Queensland, but was spending two weeks with her mother during the school holidays. She was reported missing from the estate at 8.20 a.m. last Friday, January 14th, and on Tuesday, a body believed to be hers was located in a barrel about an hour's drive away near the Collar River. Her stepfather, Justin Lawrence Stein, 31 years old, was arrested at a unit in Surrey Hills at 8.30 p.m. on Tuesday night and charged with murder after declining to be formally interviewed by investigators. News.com.au is not suggesting the police allege anyone other than Justin Lawrence Stein had any involvement in the girl's disappearance and alleged murder. So that's the beautiful property. The ute, the boat... Wow. And this is Justin, the stepdad. Final hours after final hours of Charlie's Mutton. Detectives allege Stein drove around Sydney for up to five hours with Charlie's body in the back of his boat while he tried to work out where to dump her on the night of January eleventh. 
Homicide detectives retraced Stein's steps after he allegedly purchased five 20 kilogram bags of, stand, of sand from Bunnings, fueled up his boat, and tried to launch it from an inner Sydney dock. They also allegedly found a blue tarp on the back of the boat, which was inoperable. inoperable. They also allegedly found a blue tarp in the back of the boat, which was inoperable. Police allege Stein ended up leaving the heavy barrel containing Charlisa's body in dense bushland after struggling to dump it in the Collar River. The barrel was found late on Tuesday after a wide-scale investigation was launched last week. Ms. Mutton is understood to have reported Charlisa's disappearance at 8.20 a.m. on Friday, January 14th, though police were told she was last seen sometime on Thursday afternoon. Which can't be true because she died on Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. Deputy Commissioner Dave Hudson told reporters that while investigators are still uncertain of exactly what happened, they were certain about a number of facts. He said police will allege the accused placed the girl's body in the barrel. Things will unravel over the next week or so to find a cause of death, the purpose for a death, and try to identify exactly what happened so that the remaining family have some comfort in that, he told reporters. Deputy Commissioner Hudson also revealed police will allege in court the alleged murderer had held phone conversations with a child's mother in the lead-up to the body being discovered. There were a number of telephone conversations with the girl's mother to purchase a number of sandbags, 20 kilogram sandbags from a hardware store, to fuel a boat and then try and float that boat on the water at one of the docks in inner Sydney, he said. Police allege they then were able to track his movements through GPS and CCTV, back to the location where police commenced the search yesterday afternoon. Ms. Mutton is currently under medical supervision, with Deputy Commissioner Hudson saying she has been difficult to approach and contact. He said that while invest the investigation is ongoing, at this stage there is no evidence to support anything other than that the accused acted alone. However, it's still early days in the investigation. Well, if there's any new developments or when this man gets charged with her murder, I will update you. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like the way that I present true crime, please give this video a big thumbs up or leave your DNA on the thumbs up button <laughs> and leave your comments below. Remember to keep them grizzly, which means keep it classy. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so, so much for watching.